In a few moments, I will sign the North American Free Trade Act into law. NAFTA will tear down trade barriers between our three nations. It will create the world's largest trade zone and create 200,000 jobs in this country by 1995 alone. You know why the American people are angry and disgusted and frustrated? That's why. By 1995 alone. The environmental and labor side agreements negotiated by our administration will make this agreement a force for social progress as well as economic growth. And I'm going to say I'm sorry. We're going to keep winning because we're going to make America great again. Oh, I think that uh, everybody is in favor of free and fair trade, and I think that uh, uh, NAFTA is proving its worth. You wrote about as a real success. I, I, you don't have all the record because you can go back and look at what I've said consistently. Senator Obama said that you did say in 2004 that unbalanced NAFTA uh, has been good for New York and America. You did say that. You said in 96 it was proving its worth as free and fair trade. You said that in 2000 it was a good idea that took political courage. On September 19th, 1993, President Bill Clinton said the following. This is what he said, I quote. I, President Clinton, believe that NAFTA will create 200,000 American jobs in the first two years of its effect. I believe that NAFTA will create a million jobs in the first five years of its impact. Bill Clinton, end of quote. NAFTA was a mistake to the extent that it did not deliver on what we had hoped it would. I proposed spending a trillion dollars would create 13 million jobs over a five year period. So we're closing our plan, we're moving to Mexico. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm calling up the head of Carrier, and I'm gonna say, this could be Ford, by the way, this could be Nabisco, this could be any one of the hundreds of companies that are pouring into Mexico, because our leadership is so stupid, they let it happen. This could be Pfizer that's moving to Ireland, but here's what I'm doing. I'm going to say something that conservatives don't like. Because while I'm a free trader, I'm a smart trader. I'm a fair trader. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to say to Carrier, enjoy your new plant. I hope it's lovely. I hope you make a lot of air conditioning units. And I buy a lot of Carrier, but I'm not buying anymore. I hope you make a lot of air conditioning units. But here's the story. Every unit you make that crosses the border, and now we're going to have a real border, remember that. We're going to have a real border. We are charging you 35% tax on that unit. That was President Bill Clinton who strongly supported that agreement. But it wasn't just President Clinton who made those claims. The Heritage Foundation, one of the most conservative think tanks in this country, said back in 1993, and I quote, virtually all economists agree that NAFTA will produce a net increase of U.S. jobs over the next decade, end of quote. That is from the Heritage Foundation, conservative. Trump, can I ask you about the, yes. the, the, the U.S. has just concluded an international trade uh, agreement with 11 countries in the Pacific. You've said that ra you'd rather have no deal yes. than sign the one that's on the table. The horrible but most deal. economists... PPP is a horrible deal. It is a deal that is going to lead to nothing but trouble. It's a deal that was designed for China to come in, as they always do, through the back door and tr totally take advantage of everyone. Trans-Pacific Partnership. Trans-Pacific Partnership. The Trans-Pacific Partnership. The Trans-Pacific Partnership. The Trans-Pacific Partnership. High-quality Trans-Pacific Partnership. We're excited about the innovative trade agreement called the Trans-Pacific Partnership. The Trans-Pacific Partnership. The Trans-Pacific Partnership. The Trans-Pacific Partnership. The Trans -Pacific Partnership. The Trans-Pacific Partnership. Trans-Pacific Partnership. A far-reaching new trade agreement called the Trans-Pacific Partnership. From new trade agreements like the Trans-Pacific Partnership. We also discussed...
looks at history understands that our trade policies from NAFTA CAFTA to China have been a disaster for the American workers since 2001 we have lost almost 60,000 factories not all attributable to trade but a lot of it is millions of decent paying jobs our demand now must be to corporate America and say to them you want us to buy your products the time is long overdue for you yeah. to stop outsourcing. Let's create and States is engaging in the Trans-Pacific Partnership trade negotiations. We're pursuing a regional agreement with the nations of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. We are also pressing ahead with negotiations for the Trans-Pacific Partnership. It's 5,600 pages long, so complex that nobody's read it. It's like Obamacare, nobody ever read it. They passed it, nobody read it. Had a look at the mess we have right now. Trans-Pacific Partnership, a new free trade agreement. We are very committed to the Trans-Pacific Partnership. The Trans-Pacific Partnership. The Trans-Pacific Partnership. And it will be repealed. But this is one of the worst trade deals, and I would, yes, rather not have it. Already the confidence we've displayed by ratifying NAFTA has begun to bear fruit. We're now making real progress toward a worldwide trade agreement so significant that it could make the material gains of NAFTA for our country look small by comparison. We lose a fortune on trade. The United States loses with everybody. We're losing now over $500 billion in terms of imbalance with China. $75 billion a year imbalance with Japan. By the way, Mexico, $50 billion a year imbalance. Anyone who looks at history understands that our trade policies from NAFTA CAFTA to China have been a disaster for the American workers since 2001, we have lost almost 60,000 factories. Not all attributable to trade, but a lot of it is millions of decent paying jobs. Our demand now must be to corporate America and say to them, you want us to buy your products. The time is long overdue for you yeah. to stop outsourcing. Let's create and States is engaging in the Trans-Pacific Partnership trade negotiations. We're pursuing a regional agreement with the nations of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. You've supported trade, as I said, as long as workers are protected. Do you support this bill? I, I, I think so, Charlie. I mean, I haven't seen all the details. The Senate's going to look at it. We're going to vote on this in the next 30 minutes. I and Senator Lee and others will object to this. Rights of the Pacific, we are making progress toward finalizing a far-reaching new trade agreement called the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Everything in Washington has been a lie. Weapons of mass destruction was a total lie. We are also pressing ahead with negotiations for the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Uh, all of the big money interests, and by the way, Republicans and Democrats, well, they say, oh, well, we're going to create all of these jobs by, by having a trade agreement with China. Well, the answer is they were wrong, wrong, wrong. Over the years, we have lost millions of decent paying jobs. These trade agreements have forced wages down in America, so the average worker in America today is working longer hours for lower wages. And it's proven to be a lie. Everything's a lie. It's all a big lie. Americans get a say. Why don't Americans get a say when it comes to the most important international trade deal in history? What's our government hiding from us? It's called fascism. This is global fascism. Even though the Trans-Pacific Partnership is a free trade agreement, only five of the 29 chapters are actually about trade. The others are about regulating things like the internet, labor, local industry, healthcare, and banking. The terms are being hidden from the public. WikiLeaks reports that the administration is working so hard to keep the press from getting a hold of the agreement that even members of Congress are prohibited from keeping notes on it. Today we have the chance to do what our parents did before us. We have the opportunity to remake the world. For this new era, our national security we now know will be determined as much by our ability to pull down foreign trade barriers.